Welcome back to TCM. I'm Dave Carger. We're in the middle of a 24-hour salute to our star of the day, Jerry Lewis. And for the last several hours, we've been presenting movies that starred Lewis alongside his most famous partner, Dean Martin. Up next, Jerry Lewis returns in one of the first movies he made as a solo performer after he and Martin split up in 1956. From Paramount in 1958, it's a comedy called Rockabye Baby. The movie was loosely based on the 1944 Preston Sturgis comedy, The Miracle of Morgan's Creek. Jerry Lewis plays a small town TV repairman pining for his old sweetheart who's become a big movie star. She comes back into his life when she gets pregnant and has to hide her baby from the public. Lewis readily agrees to help her take care of the baby without realizing she's actually had triplets. Rockabye Baby was the third film that Jerry Lewis made after going out on his own, and it was one of eight films he made with writer-director Frank Tashlin. Tashlin had started out working in movies as a cartoonist in the early 1930s, and he directed cartoons for Warner Brothers in the 30s and 40s. He then started working as a screenwriter, writing for comedy stars like the Marx Brothers, Bob Hope, and Red Skelton. Tashlin's background in broad comedy and animation later infused his work when he turned to directing live-action features in the 1950s, including eight comedies starring Jerry Lewis. He directed Lewis and Martin in two of their last films, Artists and Models and Hollywood or Bust, before working with Lewis on six of his solo comedies. Here's one of them from 1958, also with Marilyn Maxwell and Connie Stevens, Rockabye Baby. Rockabye Baby premiered in 1958, just as Jerry Lewis was beginning to find his footing as a star in Hollywood without Dean Martin. Two years later, he would take total control of his material with his directorial debut, The Bellboy, which he also wrote. In 1963, he wrote and directed the signature film of his career, The Nutty Professor. But by the late 1960s, Lewis's style began to fall out of favor with American moviegoers, and his career faltered over the next decade. Still, he remained a cultural fixture as the host of the annual Labor Day telethon that raised more than $2 billion for the Muscular Dystrophy Association during the 45 years that Jerry Lewis hosted it. On the big screen, Lewis made a comeback in 1982 when Martin Scorsese cast him in The King of Comedy as a celebrated comedian who falls victim to an obsessive fan, played by Robert De Niro. A decade later, he also scored a huge hit on Broadway, playing the devil in the 1995 revival of the musical Damn Yankees. In 2009, Lewis received the Gene Hirschhold Humanitarian Award at the Oscars, and he continued to make movies until 2016, one year before he died at the age of 91. Up next, Jerry Lewis gives the ultimate Jerry Lewis performance in the 1963 comedy that's often considered his masterpiece. Next on TCM, The Nutty Professor. Then, the ladies' man. And later, the disorderly orderly. Jerry's the cure for what ails ya tonight. Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM, where we're in the middle of the 17th day of Summer Under the Stars. Every day in August has been devoted to the films of a different actor or actress. Though this is the 22nd year of Summer Under the Stars, it's the first year we've featured Jerry Lewis. He's one of 13 actors making their first appearance on Summer Under the Stars. We've been showing Lewis movies since early this morning. Jerry Lewis began his career in the early 1940s as a comedian, working the Borscht Belt circuit in New York. His career took off in 1945 after meeting singer Dean Martin in Manhattan. As a duo on stage, Martin and Lewis had legendary chemistry, with Martin playing the suave, straight man opposite Lewis's man-child antics. Within months of their first performance, they had become one of the most in-demand duos on the nightclub circuit, and then it just got bigger. A popular radio show followed, then Hollywood came calling. Martin and Lewis made 16 films in just seven years. After an acrimonious breakup, the two men went out and succeeded on their own, with Lewis taking on more of the creative control of his projects. Up next, perhaps Jerry Lewis's best-known work, a movie he co-wrote, directed, and starred in. It's from Paramount, 1963, The Nutty Professor. Borrowing heavily from the classic story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, The Nutty Professor features Lewis as a nebbish scientist, Julius Kelp, who invents a serum to make him more manly. He succeeds, transforming into the slick, stylish ladies' man, Buddy Love a clear parody of Lewis's real-life Rat Pack pals, Frank Sinatra, Peter Lawford, 
and, of course, Dean Martin. Now, given the bad blood between Martin and Lewis after their professional breakup, his portrayal of Buddy Love was always seen as a swipe at Martin. But Lewis confessed that if Buddy Love was a swipe at anyone, it was at the expense of Lewis's own off-camera persona. Earlier this year, Lewis's son, Chris Lewis, self-published a biography about his father titled Jerry Lewis on Being a Person. The title was inspired by a booklet Jerry Lewis wrote for the film crew on The Nutty Professor in 1962 in response to rumblings of jealousy and backbiting on the set. I'll tell you more about both books after the movie. From 1963, also with Stella Stevens, The Nutty Professor. I had the pleasure of talking with Jerry Lewis about The Nutty Professor at the TCM Classic Film Festival several years ago. I asked him a question he'd been asked often ever since the film was released. Who is Buddy Love? Jerry wouldn't name any specific people he'd modeled the character after, but he did say he tried to make him a nasty, irredeemably dishonest human being with no sensitivity to others. As I mentioned before the movie, Jerry Lewis was concerned about tensions and resentment within the crew while making The Nutty Professor, so he wrote a booklet, nearly 100 pages, about the benefits of being kind and respectful called Being a Person. Lewis only had 200 copies printed, handing them out to the entire crew, and he believed it improved the vibe on the set. Earlier this year, Lewis's son, Chris Lewis, self-published a biography of his dad titled Jerry Lewis on Being a Person. My book explains the meanings of dad's pages as I see them, said Chris offering my memories and experiences, but most importantly, the feelings my dad inspired as I watched, worked, laughed, and cried with him. Chris's book contains more than 300 photographs, most of them never seen before, as well as Jerry's original drawings. It also details the genesis of the decade-long Martin Lewis partnership and interviews with friends and personalities close to Jerry. Ahead tonight, more of our 24-hour Jerry Lewis movie marathon. This time, he's the houseboy in a hotel for women. Produced and directed by Lewis, who also wrote the screenplay with Bill Richmond and an uncredited Mel Brooks, The Ladies' Man, is next on TCM. Next on TCM, The Ladies' Man. Then, The Disorderly Orderly. And later, Smorgasbord. Dig into more Jerry Lewis tonight.